I'm gonna start filming, so you have to go. Bye. All right. Ugh, this is comfy. May or may not succeed in locking the door. The one thing about cats, they do not want the door closed. They don't want to go through the door. They don't want to use the door. They just want it open. It can't be closed. But my family's watching a movie, so that doesn't bode well for me to be filming. I need to move out again really bad, but I need to be able to film in order to move out, but I need to move out in order to film. This is an issue. Let's try closing the door. We'll see how long the closed door lasts. I don't think it's gonna work very well. The door's been locked for 10 seconds now, my cats are fighting. Welcome to another video, hi. If you can't tell, I really need to dye my hair. There's a few different colors going on here, but it's fine. I just had to throw that in there because obviously I start all my videos talking about my hair for some reason. Pretty sure I said this exact same thing verbatim in my last video, but I never plan to do start talking about it in the videos. I start filming, I see something in the viewfinder that's bothering me about my hair. I feel like I need to point out something because it's always so different. It's just a segment now, I guess. No matter how long I go without filming, it's always a segment. Today's video is a video that I'm refilming. I tried to film this already. I felt like it was all over the place, even though I pretty much had it done. Is this flattering lighting? The only answer is yes. Let's find a different place to put this. So this little light here is magnetic. And I thought that was cool. Cause I was like, cool, I can just stick it to something magnetic. Then I could film. I don't even need a tripod. I could just stick it to things. Well, I don't have magnetic things. That's the problem. This is cool, but I don't have a lot of just magnets. Hang My wall's not made of magnets. The tripod's magnet, but it's like that. I was lying at the beginning. It's not flattering lighting. The answer is no. So I don't really know what I get to do lighting wise because uh, I really don't want to go set up my big lights. This is just a problem of pure laziness. It's not a real problem. I could solve it if I wasn't just lazy as are pretty much all my problems. I mean, if I hold it like this, I mean, it's, it's lighting. Turn it up a little more. Oh, not, that's not the button to turn it up. All right, okay. I just started filming and my back already hurts. That's really great, I love that. They kind of look like little pigs with their little, little snout. It's like their own personal shovel. They use it to throw up dirt, not, not throw up dirt, but throw up dirt in the air. They're not puking up dirt through their nose. Dumb is a term of endearment for me. From a breeder, don't go to pet. Schmo. I don't want to get in trouble for saying company names, you know? Go go to a breeder. You can look at morphmarket.com if you don't know where to start. This man ate my son. And I just wanted to redo it because why not add even more time to the upload process by redoing a video I already had done? But that's what I get for being a perfectionist. So today's video is about hog noses because there's been a general huge rise in their popularity over the last year or so. I know I'm late to the party because I haven't been filming videos, but I still wanted to talk about it. It's still a thing. They're still very popular. They're more expensive than ever right now. I started actually using my TikTok, which is something I thought I would never do, and I'm gonna stay on the platform unless it's banned, and then whatever. I got a few months on it, I guess. So nevertheless, I was on TikTok, and I posted a video of my hog nose, and a lot of the comments below that video were asking a lot of questions about the care of hog noses, if they're gonna be okay for first-time snake owners. I do have a video I posted a long time ago, like a long, 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 long time ago, about snakes that I think could make a good first-time snake for people that have never had snakes before. Before. And that video is still up on my channel, but I didn't talk about hog noses specifically in that one. While I do feel like there is a list of snakes that are better for first time snake owners, even within that list, there's going to be pros and cons to every single snake. You gotta decide what's best for you and the amount of knowledge you have and how much research you've done and how comfortable you are with certain issues that might arise from different species of snakes. So hog noses are definitely one that could be a first time snake, but again, there are things that come with it that you gotta understand. So let's Let's talk about hog noses a little bit, what they're all about, and yeah, <laughs> let's get into it. So let's start with talking about the appearance of hog noses and why they look the way they look. If you know about hog noses, you might have a pretty good idea why they're called hog noses because they wink like a pig. No, um, it's because their tail goes in a little like a pig. 
No, it doesn't. It's because their nose is a pig nose, kind of, sort of. They got a weird snout. It's not their nose per se. It's just, you know, it, they got a weird snout. They have a little pointed snout on their face and that's where they get the name hog nose. This little extremity on their body also will get them commonly mistaken to be a type of viper, which is why one of their names, other than the hog nose, is they're commonly called faux vipers. Not commonly, but they are sometimes referred to as faux vipers. They are a species of colubrid. They're not a viper. They're not part of the viper family. They are their own little subspecies of colubrid. Other snakes that are colubrids are like rat snakes, king snakes, milk snakes, which are go under a type of king snake really, garter snakes, corn snakes, which is just a type of rat snake. There's a lot of colubrids out there. The most general look and appearance associated with colubrids is kind of like the rat snake, corn snake look. Very smooth scales, the rounded oval face, long slender bodies, but hog noses kind of defy all of that. Hog noses are shorter than most colubrids. They got the little pointed snout unlike other colubrids and they have keeled scales instead of the smooth scales. While there are other colubrids that do have more rigid keeled scales, most of them don't. The scales are another reason why people associate them more so with other snakes and think that they might be a venomous snake. While they are technically considered venomous, we're gonna get to why that doesn't really matter for people at all, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. So with the appearance of these guys, they are funny. They're a little funny looking. That's because they are a burrowing snake. They like to burrow in the, the ground. So evolution has given them the gift of of this little snout which aids them in moving substrate dirt foliage out of the way so they can dig into the ground and make little tunnels so right out the gate if you're going to care for a hog nose you want to give them plenty of substrate to dig around in they're gonna make little tunnels they're gonna make little caves they like to burrow so give them the most substrate you want to give go substrate crazy fill it up to the top maybe don't do that but give them a lot. <laughs> you wanna make sure they're able to burrow. So as I mentioned, they have keeled scales, which just means they're a little more rigid and bumpy and risen up compared to other snakes that we really commonly see in the pet trade that have more smooth scales. And due to the fact that they have their snout, it gives the illusion that they have this more triangular shaped face. And that again leads them to be misidentified as a type of viper. But no, this is like the 10th time mentioning it. They, they're not a viper. Video's done. They're not a viper and they can't oink. Thanks for listening. Hognoses in the wild are native to North America. They can be found basically anywhere from Southern Canada all the way down to Northern Mexico. So yes, even though they are in the United States, snakes? I just combined the words state and snake. Uh, even though they are in the United States, if you live somewhere where you can find them in the wild, please do not catch them and keep them as your pet. You don't want to catch wild animals and keep them as your pet. You don't know what kind of parasites they have first off. You don't know what kind of illnesses you may be bringing into your house. They are wild and they deserve to stay in the wild instead of the babies that are born in captivity and don't need to be released into the wild. Don't do that either. Let's keep the pets where they are and keep the wild ones where they are. Let's not mix them together. They live in a variety of habitats in the wild, including forests, deserts, and grasslands. So their little pig nose can be used in a wide variety of substrates and you can provide them a pretty wide variety of substrates in captivity. Now an important distinction to make is the kind of hog nose that everyone is wanting as a pet that is being very popular right now in the pet trade is the western hog nose. There's also the eastern hog nose which is bigger and definitely not as common in the pet trade community. So you might have been thinking about this ever since I mentioned it. Yes they are technically venomous but there's a reason this is not a big worry for anyone in the pet trade. There's a reason that they aren't really categorized as venomous snakes even though they do have a venom. This venom is really only potent in subduing their prey which is primarily amphibians and some small rodents. On top of this western hog noses are rear fanged snakes. Being rear fanged means that their venom glands are located in the back of their upper jaw and with the way that they typically bite if they were to bite a human you're not really going to get that venom anyway. You're mostly going to just get a normal quick bite. While some people's reactions are definitely more severe than others, the max damage it tends to be able to inflict on someone is just pain and swelling within the region of the bite site. 
Remember that western hognose bites won't even be deep enough to allow them to get venom into you most of the time because of their rear fangs. So there's not even a guarantee that if they do bite you that this would happen to you. I'm just letting you know that it is possible so you can be aware of the potential pain levels you'll be dealing with. Definitely keep it in mind because if you do get bee stings and wasp stings and you tend to swell a lot more than other people, this may be another case where you might get a worse reaction than others. It's just something to keep in mind that it definitely is something that's possible. Doesn't mean it's going to happen, but yeah. Being a rear fang snake, their delivery of venom is not going to be as effective as the venom that you would get from a front fang snake like a viper. There are some rear fang snakes though, like the boom sling, that do have a pretty potent venom even though they are rear fanged and you don't want to just go up and handle them willy-nilly, but the hog nose is just not one of these one of these types. <laughs> okay, one of my lights died and I had to charge it real quick, so I'm back and I got a little stinky girl here. I got a little stinky girl here. Can you say hi? Say hi. Say hi. Hello. 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 Okay, I'm putting her down. She doesn't want to do that. And that's okay. I will pet her. I will do as she wishes. I don't really remember exactly where I left off, but we're just going to go ahead and start talking about some of the typical hognose behavior. And if my lights are wavering at all, that is because Star is rolling around on the bed. She is very comfy. She is purring very loud. Western hognoses are generally pretty docile. When I got my hognose, she was my second snake ever, and I'd only had my other snake for so many months before I got Celia. And to this day, she has never bit me. She has never tried to bite me. Nothing. She's been great. Even my very first ball python, Maui, who is just a sweetheart and I would generally say that he would let me murder him before he would ever bite me. He will let you do anything. He's a sweetheart. When he's ever gotten any exams from the vet they're able to do anything to him and he tolerates it. Even when you can tell he's a little uncomfortable like at the vet he does not even strike. He's a sweetheart and even he has bit me before by accident just overshooting his shot at his prey and landing a bite on me instead. If it's any consolation I, I can tell he's remorseful though. I don't know how. I can't really explain it to you you, but his face looks very sorry when he does it and I believe him. But, but with that being said, Celia has never ever ever even done that. <laughs> she has never ever tried to bite me. I'm not saying this is how all hognoses are. I have seen some more temperamental hognoses, especially as babies. I have seen them be a little more defensive, but I'm just saying that they are generally pretty docile, especially once they reach adulthood if you handle them really well. All babies in the clue bird family can be a little nippy, but I think hognoses don't generally tend to be. They can, so I'm not gonna tell you you won't get one. Like if you're afraid of the idea, if you're a new snake owner and you're afraid of the idea of getting bit at all, I'm never gonna tell you you won't get bit. That's just part of animals in general. That's their way to defend themselves when they're scared. Doesn't matter what kind of animal it is. They use their mouth to communicate in ways other than speaking because they cannot. Thank you for coming to my channel for those facts. Snakes cannot speak the human language. I am glad I could tell you that. When it comes to their main defense though, they've gotten a little popular for it. They are known to play dead. Now this is something Celia has never done. So if like, if you're getting a hog nose because you wanna watch them play dead, they might never do that. And again, this is only when they feel in danger. If anything, a baby would probably do it more often than an adult, unless you just get an adult who's more timid. Or if you don't interact with your baby at all and then they grow into adulthood and aren't used to you, they may be prone to doing that more often. They will roll around, they throw a big fit, they put on all the dramatics and they act like they're dying. If anything, I would say hog noses are pretty docile, but they are incredibly dramatic. They are a very dramatic snake. They will put on all the theatrics. Celia would never ever harm me, but she is a drama queen and this can be very um, intimidating for someone who is a little more uncomfortable around snakes and, and hasn't gotten used to working with snakes and this could be a deterrent for having a hog nose as your very first snake because they are very loud. They are very defensive. This again, you might get one that doesn't even do this, but I'm just warning you. It's a common trait for them to be loud, to be be a little dramatic when it comes to defending themselves and that doesn't mean that they're going to bite but it means they're gonna they're gonna put on a show Thank you. 
I know a lot of people who are even comfortable with snakes but still it elicits a reaction out of them and makes them nervous. This can be bad for someone who is trying to get comfortable having snakes and getting used to caring for them because it might entice you to react and drop them if they start being a little more vocal. You might be uncomfortable with their unpredictability when it comes to getting a little loud and hissy. It doesn't mean they're gonna hurt you and you learn that pretty quick. Once you work with snakes for a while, you get used to all of their warning signs of when they're just being a little a little grumpy and when they're actually being more defensive and trying to strike at you or threatening to strike you and you know how to avoid that and you know how to de-escalate the situation, how to calm them down or how to just take a nip and deal with it. That's one thing I do warn a bunch of snake owners about, a quick little diversion just while I'm on this topic. This is harder for people that are just starting to have snakes, like just starting to get into the hobby of taking care of them. It could be a little harder to not react when a snake goes to lunge at you. Of course, when they're lunging, you could dodge the strike. But if their strike actually does hit, you need to not retaliate. With my snakes, no matter how big the snake is, no matter if I'm looking the other way and totally not expecting it, or if I know it's coming, if they bite, I don't react and that is because snakes mouths are very vulnerable when they're in this position when they're wide open and biting a quick jerk or a quick pull grabbing at their mouth to pull them away improperly can really hurt their jaw can rip out their teeth so there's other ways to de-escalate you could pour some cold water on them and this is going to make them leave eventually it might not be immediately but if you pour some cold water over their head they are obviously cold-blooded animals so they're going to want to leave and find a heat source and if they feel that their head is cooling down they're gonna let go eventually if for some reason your snake is really determined to munch on you you can get an alcohol swab and try that way just putting a little whiff of the alcohol swab around their nose should cause them to recoil that doesn't work there are proper ways to work at the jaw to try to get them to open wider but depending on the way they bit you if their mouth is already like as wide as it can get they're not gonna be able to stretch it even further to get off of you. I am doing another video on how to work with reptiles and snakes in general biting you, how to safely get a snake off of you that has bitten you, in general how to work with a snake that's a little more defensive and how to get them to be more accepting and welcoming to your presence. <laughs> that's a whole nother video, but I just wanted to mention that in here because any snake can bite and if they do, you don't want to just rip them off of you. That's not a good plan. The good news though with a hog nose is they are a smaller species of snake, so their bite is less intense to feel. I really don't personally find any snake bites of any of my snakes personally of their sizes to be too overwhelming. It's over before I know it normally. Some of my ball pythons like Chip who has a neurological disorder and can't see very well while feeding he will accidentally get me and hold on longer. I, the longest I've ever had him hold on was like 12 or so minutes. He was really determined to stay on me and even then like I was able to deal with it calmly. You definitely get used to it and of course it all depends on your personal pain receptors and like your tolerance for pain but in general it's something you can work with and it's not oh my god excruciating at least in my opinion it might be for some people that's okay point that i'm getting at is with hog noses they are much smaller so if they are gonna bite you it's gonna be pretty it's gonna be a pretty tiny bite comparatively it shouldn't be too hard to deal with but it could happen i want to like put as many disclaimers around this as i can because although they are a snake that looks towards other defenses first before or biting that doesn't mean I can promise you that the snake that you personally get won't be nippy so with that being said if you are really intimidated by the idea of a snake doing false strikes being loud this might be a kind of intimidating snake to get for your very first snake as they could be very dramatic if you've had your hog nose for a while you definitely will get used to it but if you're someone who's not used to working with snakes it could scare you and it could deter you from working with them which if you want them to stop doing that you need to handle them more they might always do it to an extent like Celia does, but if you want them to feel safe when you hold them, you need to be able to hold them even if they're being a little hissy that day, a little five, 10 minutes of interaction, it makes a lot of difference, especially as babies, as they're growing up. So that's something you need to take into account. Um, ball pythons as babies tend to be very slow. You will sometimes come across a more defensive baby. I've had two that are much more nippy and then the other ones are all just like, do whatever you want with me, I don't care. And then other colubrids tend to be a little faster moving and they are a little nippy as babies, but both of them and ball pythons aren't vocal and loud 
loud and huffy and puffy like hog noses are. Now, going back to the fact that they do play dead, this is something that attracts a lot of people to wanting to choose a hog nose as their pet. They think it's cute, they think it's funny, but if you're trying to get a hog nose just because you want to watch it play dead and like show it to your friends or put it on social media or something like that, I want to remind you that playing dead is their defense when they're scared. So you don't want to encourage this behavior. You don't want to antagonize or egg them on and make them play dead. You want to get them comfortable with you and avoid them doing that. Celia has never once ever played dead ever. Some babies will do it a lot more often until they get comfortable with you and then some like mine will never do it and then some will just kind of do it periodically all throughout their life. You can't really predict when they're going to do it or not but it won't be very common. You don't want to egg it on. You don't want to antagonize it. Basically what you're showing is that your snake is scared but going back to the fact that they might do that more as babies that's normal for all snakes. Not the playing dead part but the being a little extra defensive. For example my snake Tofu as a baby he did what I called yelling a lot which is just him pulling himself up into a little zigzag line making himself look bigger and opening his mouth really big. This does mean that he's scared but it's not something I encourage. I think it's cute. It's It makes me laugh but I'm actively working with him to get him to a stop and the only way to get him to stop because he's a baby is to take him out regardless of him doing that or not and continuing to work with him either way. So I do take pictures of him a lot when he does that. I think it's cute. I think it's funny but he's not going to do that all his life. He's stopping a lot more recently. He's getting a lot better just in the last few months. Dramatic changes. So I just want to say that it doesn't mean it's horrible if you film it happening or if you show it, show your friends or laugh about it happening if it does happen with your snake. It's just not something you want to encourage or try to egg on and it's something that you have to understand if your snake likes you and trusts you and like is comfortable with you they'll do it less and less often unless you get a particularly scared snake. Snakes all have their own personalities so you can't like know by the book what's going to happen but if that's something that's motivating you to get a hog nose please keep in mind that it's something that you want to work against happening instead of encourage happening. Now when it comes to hog noses they are prone to having certain health issues. They do often get respiratory issues and parasitic issues. If you keep their enclosure clean you keep their humidity at the right level and don't overdo it those issues should be ultimately avoided but it is important to keep in mind regardless that they are more sensitive of that and that it might be something that will contribute to vet bills one day and so it is important that you have the knowledge to prevent that. Please make sure to research properly the humidity conditions. Make sure that your room that you would keep them in can handle the humidity, the lower humidity that they need, the temperature that they need, and please make sure you have the time to keep their enclosure clean. This isn't really a care video for hog noses. This is just talking about the pros and cons of keeping them as your first pet and things to consider. So I'm not doing the ins and outs of every little thing about them. I'm just kind of running through the things to consider. So please look into that and make sure that it's something that you are comfortable being able to handle within whatever area they're going to be kept in. The time that it would take to keep them clean and the humidity, all that, and to make sure you have the money to cover the potential vet bills. When it comes to feeding them, you are going to have to be comfortable with feeding them mice. Just like any other snake, you need to be comfortable feeding them mice and rats. That's just part of it. I do 100% recommend to feed them frozen, not live. Live is very dangerous, in my opinion, for any snake that is going to be able to accept frozen. If you can train the snake to eat frozen, it should eat frozen. No matter if you bought it and it was eating live before you got it or what, it doesn't matter. I think they should all be switched to frozen. Personally, I think it is safest because as the snake gets older, so does the prey. The prey continues to get older and the bigger the prey, the better they can fight back. It just takes one bite from a rat to give them a bad bacterial infection. You don't want that. If the snake doesn't eat it immediately, the rat is going to be running around their enclosure. This is very stressful for the snake. Um, it could be a more stressful experience in general. The snake may refuse to eat and then you have a rat that you don't know what to deal with. You can't leave them in the cage together. That is horrible. The rat could end up eating the snake if they are together. If your snake is refusing the rat, it's not because they want to be friends. They're not friends. They don't become friends. Your snake is stressed. Your snake is going through something physically where it does not want to eat or mentally where it's stressed and leaving that live prey in its enclosure is only going to cause more stress and anxiety for your snake. Just because it lets the rat run up on it, that does not mean that they're friends. It does not mean they like it. The worst case scenario is that rat is gonna start biting on the snake and best case scenario, leave it with wounds and a bacterial infection and just hurt the snake. Worst case scenario, it's gonna eat the snake. I mean, even vice versa, the snake could bite the rat and let it go and then you have an injured rat suffering for no reason. It's just stressful for both the animals when you could just buy frozen. 
Frozen is just all around safer in my opinion. Hognoses will just eat frozen rodents in captivity. They don't need amphibians in captivity. There are picky hognoses that will go on food strikes, but there's also pythons that'll go on food strikes. It's something that can happen with a lot of snakes. It's something you have to be prepared to handle regardless of if you choose a hognose or a ball python or another snake as a first time snake. Anyway, that's really the main stuff I wanted to cover. Just some basic information about western hognoses and some general areas within their care and behavior that I thought warranted a bit of a warning about before first-time snake owners rush into getting one. None of this was to say that this can't be someone's first snake, just that there are some attributes of western hognoses to keep in mind if you are considering them to be your first snake. Please do your own research about their care. This was just some general facts about them, and this was not a comprehensive care guide by any means. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.